Greetings, doll lovers and horror fans. I am Master Dolly, the Doll Master. Thank you for accepting my invitation to the House of Dolls Midnight Horror Show, where I, along with Charlotte, and all of my beautiful creations, bring you the latest and the most terrifying horror films and shorts. Did Master Dolly pyramid his collection of films and select some for us to watch? That's right, Queen Hather. Master Dolly has extracted some of the best horror shorts from the vault and they are ready to go. That's absolutely right, Charlotte. I spared no expense for our wonderful guest this evening. Master, the big clock on the wall is telling us it's time to start the show. Thank you for keeping us on track as always, Charlotte. Well, why don't we start off this evening with a terrifying ghost story that's sure to give you nightmares for weeks to come. Something to scare the sheet out of our guests, I'm sure. Is there anyone we know in this? Just asking for a fiend. Edgar and I are expecting this to be spooktacular. Someone needs to wake me up from this nightmare. Elijah. You have to stop calling me. I know, I just, I just wanted to thank you for the flowers. I didn't get you any flowers. Stop calling. Sit with me. It's all right. You know, I think you might even be sadder than me. Why are you so sad? I lost someone. They died. More like I died. How tragic. What are you doing out here? I'm waiting for someone. Why are you so sad? Because I'm alone. I've always been alone. Yeah, me too.
Hey, birthday boy. Hey, hey. Did you like your flowers? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. You seem disappointed. I just thought they were from Sam. She's married. What did you expect? I think you're just afraid of being alone. Did you sleep? No. I don't sleep. Just, uh, just dream. I really wish you would just talk to someone. I do. I'll talk to you. No, you don't. So what was your dream about? Uh, just a lady playing the violin in the woods. Maybe it's your unconscious telling you to move on. Did you dye your hair? Two months ago. Well, I like it. I missed you. Are you ready to go? I still have to say some goodbyes. Don't take too long. We can't be together until you're ready to go. Are you okay? I don't know, Amy. I'm, I'm falling in love with this woman in my dreams. Maybe she's your lover archetype. Like a projection of your unconscious longing. Well, whatever she is, I miss her when I'm awake. Hey, you. Hello, Sharon. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to see you. I was afraid I wouldn't get to say goodbye. Goodbye? Yes, I have to go. I can feel it. But I'll miss you. And I'll miss you. I'm thankful for you. You were my bridge. Your, your bridge? <laughs> you help people get over their troubled waters. I think you've always been a bridge. Marion, I, I love you. Sweet Elisha. Love is for the living.
that's not quite what I thought it was going to be. That's so romantic. What a great way to start off the show, Master. So enchanting. I just want to scry my heart out. Boo-hoo. Such a boo story. My mascara uh, is running. What a charming boy meets ghoul story. I'm just a bit unraveled after that one. OMG. This is ridiculous. Oh, you'll have to excuse Jane. Her joints are a little bit too tight. If you know what I mean. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not. How can I? You're nothing. You're a thing of the mind and... Deep down I, I think people know that. They just are more afraid of being wrong. But I'm not. Not one bit. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. I fucking knew it. So you think you've seen it all. I've been following your work for some time, and while I can appreciate your dedication to truly debunk some of these myths, I think you are incredibly naive and arrogant. Monsters do exist, my friend. Ghosts too. And even more frightening creatures. I know you won't believe me, so I challenge you to summon the filmer. Not sure if you have ever heard of him, but the legend started in the late 80s. You could do your research, and I'm sure you will find out more information, but what you won't find is what I am going to share with you here. But be warned. If you do this, there is no turning back. However, if you truly hold no belief in these kinds of things, then I guess you have nothing to be afraid of. You must use an actual VHS camcorder and film yourself repeating and doing the following. A digital camera or your cell phone will not work. Once you have secured your camera, you must record to a blank tape and repeat, I asked the filmer to reveal himself, as I do not believe for how can such things exist. We know not the filmer's true name, for he has none. He was never a man never reality. He exists only within our minds and nothing more. If I'm wrong, 
and prove yourself and take my life for I offer it to you in search of the truth. As soon as this is completed, you have two options. Option A, you immediately rewind the tape and record over it. I apologize to the filmer for I do believe. Repeat this until you are absolutely sure you have taped over your original recording. Then burn the tape. By doing this, you might feel weird for a few days, but after that it will go away. Option B, there's no turning back after this. After you are done with the original recording, you very simply just burn the tape. You might not feel or see anything at first, but I promise you, you will wish that you had not been so arrogant in your beliefs. Best of luck. I ask the filmer to reveal himself as I do not believe for how can such things exist. We know not the filmer's true name for he has none. He was never a man, never reality. He exists only within our minds and nothing more. If I'm wrong, then prove yourself and take my life for I offer it in search of the truth.
What's up, Mike? Not much. Just thought I'd stop by, see what you were up to. You're looking at it. Haven't heard from you in a while. Yeah, well, I guess you heard Taylor and I broke up. I did hear about that. She just got the last of her stuff out of our place, so, uh... Yeah, it's been something. It's been something. I bet. Anyways, uh, how are you? How's the website? It's pretty great, actually. Uh, I just posted a new article about Bloody Mary. I got this strange email, though. Uh, some guy talking about an urban legend named The Filmer. I don't know. I, I tried to do some research on it, but I couldn't find shit. The Filmer? Never heard of it. Uh... Wait a minute, actually I have, um, in middle school, uh, I think it was called The Huntsman by the time I heard about it, but I tried to tell it at a few parties, but by then people were calling it The Filmer, so, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. That's, that's funny, man, because I've literally never heard of it. Oh, jeez, uh, well, I think the basic story goes, like, it was this guy that had a house out in the middle of the woods, and, uh, he would just like kidnap people and bring them down into his like dungeon or cellar or something and he would like mutilate and torture these people like and re would record himself doing it and he wore this like weird mask that had antlers attached to it and I guess like one time this 13 year old girl escaped and the sheriff found her and they were able to figure out where she was uh, based on where they found her so they took her back and um, by then I guess the guy was gone but they found like 22 bodies um, buried all over the property and uh, in the cellar they found like VHS tapes of it and all this weird voodoo shit and uh, you know they didn't find the guy until a few years later these kids out in the middle of the woods I guess found his body and it was like in this weird uh, I guess kind of satanic circle or some shit and uh, that's kind of I guess where the stories started um, you know some people say that he made a deal with the devil or that he killed himself or you know all this whatever and, but I mean, it's just a ghost story. That's kind of where it all came from. But, uh, but to be honest, I really can't remember what the whole thing is. That's just the main gist of it, I think. Did he? Did he have a name? No, not really. Uh, we just called him the Huntsman, I think, uh, or Filmer. I'm sorry. That's kind of a stupid name, actually. Filmer. Do you know about the ritual? Uh, uh, no, the Filmer was just like a ghost story. Why did the email tell you how to summon him or something? Yeah. And? And what? Has anything happened? You expect something to happen? Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. I know. That is a shame about you and Taylor, though.
Hey, babe. What's up? Oh, hey, uh, not much. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm not really doing anything. Just been working on this article. Uh, that's good. Well, hey, uh, I ended it with Mike. Yeah, he told me. Wait, really? No, yeah, he was just here. Does he know? I mean, did he say anything yeah, he like we were... has no idea. Oh, okay. So, uh, you want to come over? I don't know. At least not right now. I mean, what Babe. if he shows up again? He's not going to come by. Well, how do you know? Well, we can't keep doing this shit. Either come over Why or... are you getting mad? I'm not getting mad. Okay, well, you sure sound it. I'm not getting mad. You're just starting to sound like a bitch. I, I just don't get it. Um, excuse me? How am I sounding like a bitch? How am I sounding like a bitch? Just because I don't want to fuck you right uh, now? I'm not, I'm busy. I'm not dealing with this right now. Okay, now you don't want to deal go. with this? You can be mad all you want. I said I'm not fucking mad. Stop being a bitch. Okay, you know what? What the fuck ever? I'll talk to you later, alright? Alright? Okay, sure, yeah, whatever, bye. Oh, you fucking bitch.
the door open. I was hoping to see Bloody Mary in that one. Maybe next time they'll have better luck. I'm not sure what the problem was. Conjuring evil spirits is not that difficult. Well Charlotte, what do you think of my latest creation? I love it Master, it's absolutely beautiful. And I know our fans will love them too. Get your House of Dolls Midnight Horror Show t-shirt, exclusively at HouseOfDollsHorrorShow.com Get one for yourself and your favorite ghoul or doll. I'm going to get some more food. Someone move my piece. Uh, are you guys not having fun? Well, we have other board games, right, Allie? You know where they are. All right, guys, so we have Cranium, Monopoly, um, Game of Life, and Yahtzee. Okay, Monica, I don't want to be a douche, and I'm not saying I'm speaking for everyone, but I think I'm speaking for everyone when I say we don't want to play board games anymore. 
Ooh, I got something. So this is Violent Round, or VR. Get it? Anyone? Anyways, this is a new horror game based in VR found online. It's still in development, so it's a little buggy. All right, so what do you do? You wake up in an abandoned warehouse. This place has held many murders. Your objective is collect audio tapes and escape while being chased down by the killer himself. Collect all of them, you get out. But if he catches you, you die. So Monica, you go first. Wh why me? Well, you're the one that wanted us to get together for game night. Come on, Monica. It's just a game. Besides, if you die first, you won't have to play again. Okay, so what do I have to do? Take these controllers, and you go stand over there. This is Dr. Gerald Croft, psychiatrist. If you're listening to this, you may be in great danger. One of my patients, who suffers from a condition which I diagnosed as schizophrenia with homicidal tendencies, was convicted for murdering his mining partner. Now he's escaped from prison, and maybe in this very warehouse. Several people have disappeared, but believed to be murdered by my patient. Despite authorities searching the building, no bodies, nor my patient, have been found. As you try to find your way out, please do so with extreme caution. is a prospector who has spent years in an abandoned silver mine. His prolonged exposure to silver dust has accumulated in his bloodstream, causing him to develop agiria, a disease causing grain of the skin. He also has thrombophobitis, causing the veins to be readily seen. It is my belief that the silver in his bloodstream has left deposits in his brain cells, which may also affect his mental stability. More later. Would you guys like to try this? I'll do it. This is Dr. Gerald Croft, psychiatrist. If you're listening to this, you may be in great danger. What am I paying? During my sessions with the patient in prison, he spoke of the time that he separated from his partner. He went and explored an unknown shaft within the mine that was boarded up. 
He uses pickaxe and pry some boards off to gain entrance into the shaft. Once inside, and assuming that he was alone, he still felt that someone else was there. Nope, nope, nope. Looking about the area, he came across what appeared to be human remains. He noticed a putrid odor, but it wasn't coming from the remains, but something else entirely. He claimed that there was this entity that overtook him physically and mentally, and it was this entity that caused him to sneak out and kill his partner. Yes! Yeah! 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 It's my contention that being in a dark, unknown environment and seeing the horror of the human remains, that he went into shock. While in fear and escaping the mine, he killed his partner, believing him to be the entity that he created in his own mind. Someone else. You know it's your turn. No, come on. Look, we've all played it multiple times, and you haven't played it once. You've seen what we went through. You could breeze right through this. I just want to let you know, good luck. We're all counting on you. Smooth. Shut up. During my absence, the warden has informed me that my patient has killed both guards and inmates. Security has been so high that he has now been chained within his own cell. On my visit today, a prison guard confronted me. This guard is a very religious man. He told me he's a firm believer of biblical stories of demon possession. So much so that he says he's seen glimpses of a demonic persona in my patient's cell. With each inmate and guard he's killed, the demon has become more pronounced in his appearance believing that it grows a stronger connection to our world with each death. The guard may be mistaking multiple personality disorder with demon possession. Uh, uh, however, I'm a psychiatrist, not an exorcist. This isn't funny. Ha ha, so original. Hello? Jake? Jake, I know this is you. If I knew you were so dead. Hello? Anyone? Monica? Come on, Monica, this isn't cool. Come on, guys.
guys. Where are you all hiding? We should probably go. <laughs> Allie, what the hell happened? I saw what, what happened. It was on the screen. No, we didn't. Whatever you saw, we didn't see. The computer shut down, the game glitched out. Steven and I tried everything to get the computer back on, and you still kept playing the game. We called your name, and you didn't even hear us. It was like you were in a completely different zone entirely. I know, I know what I saw. Look, whatever you saw, it didn't happen, okay? It was just a game. Look, I'm gonna go, okay? Okay. If you need me, if anything happens, call me, okay? Okay. Well, that certainly was fun now, wasn't it? We all had such a wonderful time having you as our guest at the manor this evening. While Charlotte and I prepare the invitations for our next feat, be sure to visit houseofdollshorrorshow.com for more information by scanning the code. And if you're watching on YouTube, 
Be sure to like and subscribe to keep updated on future episodes. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok by searching House of Dolls Horror Show. On behalf of Charlotte and the other House of Dolls dolls, I am Master Dolly the Doll Master, wishing you wonderful nightmares of House of Dolls, where the dolls come alive and the horror begins.